Now everybody knows the arcade era of video games was brutally hard, and that's for a good reason. The more you died, the more quarters you'd need to put in the machine to make sure you hit the end of the level this time or the end of the game. By the time home consoles took over the scene, however, high difficulty seemed to mostly fall out of fashion. You can see the rationale behind this. No one wants to spend their hard-earned cash on a game they'll never be able to finish. But fear not, all ye challenge seekers out there, because are all modern games a walk in the park now? Hell no. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 brutal difficulty spikes in recent video games. Number 10. Into the Fire – Marvel's Spider-Man 2018 Spider-Man is a great balance of fast-paced energetic combat and laid-back web-swinging that lets you enjoy exploring the open world. Taking an unsubtle leaf out of the Batman Arkham series' book, the combat is that now classic combination of combos, gadgets, and perfectly timed counters, which you may well expect to get harder the further you get into the game. I bet you weren't expecting this, though. The level Into the Fire has Spidey battle Electro by destroying a handful of generators around the area. Halfway through the level, his web shooting spree is halted by Sable International, many of whom are now kitted out in jetpacks and thick armor. It's these very enemies that give us the difficulty spike here. Not only will you have to change up your tactics in favor of more aerial maneuvers, you'll also have to dodge their ridiculously powerful attacks. In particular, the sweeping laser mines that cover a huge chunk of ground in front of them. Needless to say, every time you're embroiled in a heavy action scene from now on, taking out these guys is gonna be your first priority. Number 9. Shindere Peak – Dishonored 2 – Death of the Outsider Dishonored 2's standalone expansion Death of the Outsider purposefully doesn't do a whole lot to separate itself mechanically from its predecessor. There's still stealth, an array of supernatural powers, and some brilliant steampunk environments for you to blink and parkour your way through. A big change does come with the last level, though. Having traveled all the way to Shindere Peak, Billy Lurk is one step away from her goal of killing the Outsider. There's just a small matter of an insane cult to deal with now. This cult harbor a powerful relic known as the Eye of the Dead God, and their exposure to it gradually turns them into the Envisioned, stone-covered golems destined to wander the Void forever. Once Billy interacts with the Eye herself, she's transported to the Void, where these creatures will proceed to give you absolute hell. Their field of vision is much larger than that of the normal enemies, and they're impossible to stun, stealth kill, or snipe from a distance. What's more, one hit from them is pretty much instant death. If you're going for an unseen run, this level will definitely be your nemesis, and even if you're not, good luck holding your own against these guys. Number 8. Octo Expansion – Splatoon 2 Splatoon 2 by itself isn't exactly a breeze. The unique ink-splashing gameplay can, in fact, get pretty darn frustrating if you let it get the best of you. If you're one of those people, then maybe the game's Octo Expansion is not for you. Taking control of an octoling for the first time in the series, players must work their way through a dingy subway network beneath Inkopolis that features 80 increasingly wicked puzzles. Other than the setting, you may be thinking, well, what else is new? It's only when you get stuck in do you realize that you couldn't have underestimated this experience anymore. For one thing, the puzzles really put to use your whole arsenal of gadgets, demanding pinpoint accuracy and some lightning-fast platforming reflexes on your part. Then there are the bottomless pits, which are virtually everywhere. If the challenging gadgetry doesn't test your patience, then falling down into nothingness a billion times will be sure to. This DLC presents so much of a challenge that it's actually been compared to the infamous Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Still think you're up for it? Number 7. Lothric Castle – Dark Souls 3 to put to rest the inevitable eye-rolling I'm sure some of you are going through right now, yes, of course Dark Souls 3 as a whole is pretty darn difficult. The tough but fair learning curve of the series is enough to finish most players off, and straight out of the gate, you're expected to have at least a fairly good grasp of the dodge-heavy combat system. But if you so choose, there is a way to make the game even more difficult. And though there are some pros and cons to this one, I'd say the cons probably outweigh the pros. One of the first areas you find yourself in is the High Wall of Lothric. Near the end of the area is a chapel, in which the priestess Emma gives you an item that allows you to progress further in the game. Much later on, Emma will die at your feet in this same chapel, and after dealing with the fearsome dancer of the Boreal Valley, the path to Lothric Castle will appear. Even under normal circumstances, this place is quite a challenge. There are few overall enemies, but the ones you do encounter are vicious to the extreme. If you want to access it early though, feel free to take Emma out yourself and enjoy being chucked around like a ragdoll by anything and everything that comes across you. That's just masochism. 
Number six, Undyne the Undying, Undertale. Undertale is a challenging experience no matter which way you go about it, but as you'd expect if you do decide to pick the evil genocide route, the creatures you come across do not exactly take kindly to you. In any situation, one of the most formidable characters in the game is Undyne, a knight of King Asgore who is dedicated to hunting down the human who fell into the underground realm of monsters. The combat encounter with her is completely different to anything else the game has to offer. Somewhat similar to the classic Atari game Tempest, the player must move a small barrier around their soul to protect it from incoming arrows. On the genocide route, Undyne clings onto her life in order to protect the world from you, and becomes Undyne the Undying. As well as the arrow minigame, your soul will have to dodge a flurry of spiraling projectiles, and land each hit perfectly within the center to defeat her. This is definitely an encounter that makes you think, is being evil really worth this? But hey, I mean, you made your bet at this point, you may as well lie in it. Number five, Hyrule Castle, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Hyrule Castle will be a pretty familiar location to anyone who's played a Zelda game. It's generally where you find the final fight and the difficulty definitely ups itself by this point. Breath of the Wild goes through much of the same motions, except for one little detail. Being an open world game, once you're let loose within the namesake wilds, there's nothing to stop you from heading straight for the castle and taking on Ganon there and then. Of course, the game does everything it can to discourage you from doing this straight away, as there are plenty of other dungeons to cut your teeth on before you take on the big bad. But if you're feeling ballsy and or plain stupid, you can waltz right up to those castle doors and brace yourself for the ass kicking of a lifetime. As if the regular enemies here weren't bad enough, the boss fight requires you to fight through all four of the Blight Ganons, provided you hadn't killed them already, one after the other. And all this with just three measly hearts and your shoddy starting equipment. If you attempt this on your head, be it. But I mean, technically the game does let you, so if you wanna do it, I'm not here to stop you. Number four, Beast Gascon, Bloodborne. Just like Dark Souls 3, if you boot up Bloodborne, I'm pretty sure you know what you're getting into. The combat is slick and fluid, with much more emphasis on speed and aggressiveness this time around. That said, the opening area of central Yharnam is, for the most part, very much a warm-up area. Most of the enemies you encounter are crazed townsfolk, and though the occasional beast is thrown in, it's nothing you can't handle with a bit of practice. Even the potential first boss, the Cleric Beast, shouldn't give you too much grief if you're already familiar with the Souls-like setup. But the other boss you can run into first, Father Gascon, has a trick up his sleeve that you're definitely not prepared for. The first half of the fight is tricky, but fairly straightforward. He has a big axe, and avoiding said axe is very much advised. It's the second half that'll leave your mouth agape, as Gascon then turns into a hyper-aggressive beast right before your eyes. The speed and ferocity of this boss is unlike anything you've fought so far. Perfect dodging is paramount. And to some extent, your previous experience with Dark Souls needs to be unlearned here. This fight should give you an idea of what's to come though, because by god, the game does not let up after this point. Number 3. Erdak, Doom Eternal 2016's Doom was already a hectic and unrelenting blood orgy, but Doom Eternal manages to up the ante to the extreme. There are so many new mechanics introduced in this game. Dashing, poles to swing on, the flame belch, the meat hook, and Doom Eternal requires you to be an absolute master of all of them by the end. On one hand, you'll feel like you're truly stepping into the shoes of the Doom Slayer here, but on the other hand, at least give us some time to catch our breath. One of the final levels is Erdak, essentially Doom's version of heaven, and by this point, every enemy type and gameplay mechanic has been well established. This of course means you're going to be fighting absolutely everything and using every last bullet in your arsenal to do so. With tyrants, doom hunters, pain elementals, archviles, and those goddamn marauders, the entirety of Hell's strongest legions will be thrown at you liberally during this level. If that isn't bad enough, try the room full of shield enemies on for size. You will never in your life be so happy to see that checkpoint reach notification. Number 2. Snacks Dimension Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time The Crash Bandicoot series is notoriously difficult, and thankfully, Toys for Bob did nothing to change that in the newest entry, Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. You may be thinking, hang on, if the whole game's hard, then how can there be a difficulty spike? Indeed, that would seem to be a bit of a contradiction. The Crash 4's difficulty spike comes with its deception. It lets you think the worst part is over, and then makes you feel extremely foolish for ever believing that to be the case. 
Once Crash and Co defeat the villainous Entropy, the game seems to wind down instantly, with our heroes celebrating and planning a trip to the snacks dimension for some well-earned grub. Seems like the perfect ending, right? In fact, this is just the beginning of the game's final act, and the snacks dimension is one hell of a brutal experience. With all four quantum masks unlocked, this opens up the levels for some wicked hard platforming as it is. But since these areas are set high in the sky, the potential for falling to your death here is even more inevitable than it normally is. Be prepared to hear that whoa sound at least 50 times. Number 1. Ginso Tree Escape – Ori in the Blind Forest Indie games have a reputation for being a lot trickier than their AAA counterparts, and generally speaking this is true, which for many makes them all the more worthwhile. Naturally though, with high difficulty comes truly sadistic difficulty spikes, and the sequence everyone remembers the most in 2015's Ori in the Blind Forest is just that. The charming 2D Metroidvania game is already a sizable challenge before you get to the Ginso Tree. Platforming and combat are utilised in equal measure, and it's very easy to lose your rhythm and have to start a particular gauntlet all over again. However, at no other point in the game does anything come anywhere close to the nerve-wracking Ginso Tree escape level. The sequence follows the well-used rising water trope seen in many platforming games, but the trickiness of the ascent is not something one could ever really understand without playing it for themselves. There's no margin for error here whatsoever, and with enemies and their projectiles being your only means of climbing higher, you'd better hope that pesky RNG is on your side. It's a truly engrossing experience from start to finish, and without its harsh difficulty, it may not have had the same impact on its fanbase that it did. That's all I have for you today. Do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other brutal difficulty spikes in recent video games. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter if you like, where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.